Hello, so I <clears throat> I'm gonna respond to or use this comment as a starting point. This is from Rachel again uh, on the last video. Who says, yes, I feel like I'm at the beginning of a mysterious adventure, which I have absolutely no control. This feels a little scary but exciting too. For, for a while now I've been doing this practice of throwing my awareness outwards from my body and then turning it around so that it looks back on itself. <clears throat> a bit like you described and of course when I do this I realise there's nothing looking. Throughout the day I feel like I'm looking from everywhere and have no particular location. My favourite insight is the sense that this knowing is everywhere and contained within everything. All of the objects appear to be vibrating with this aliveness, even the garbage bins or my dirty sneakers look beautiful. <laughs> uh, sorry to waffle. No one I watched the video you suggested. And thanks again. I'm definitely going to suggest that you're American, Rachel, based on your choice of descriptive language um, but yeah I know, I know exactly what you mean strangely enough and the, the last video was very obscure um, and strange trying to describe this um, in language which is you know a, a dualistic framework but it does point to something and if you can relax the tendency of the, the thinking mind to automatically take the contents of their language uh, as a in the objective sense what the mind tends to do is it filters out um, what's being pointed to because it, it, it can't see that so it automatically like instantly just creates a, a dualistic framework a mental model of what's being described um, and the idea with that kind of pointing is really to tie up the, the mind um, to confuse the mind to the extent where it just shuts down for even a, a split second. And then the paradoxical and mysterious nature of what's being pointed to has the chance to clarify or reveal itself to itself and experience. <clears throat> but let's follow on from that and get really weird with uh, in the non-dual inquiries, which is which is my favourite part, I think. <clears throat> I get the feeling that I maybe give too much information, risking uh, a mental model of this being made, because the mind is incredible and it, and it can construct a somewhat conclusive, somewhat satisfying mental model if if whoever's listening has that kind of capacity or inclination but of course what I'm pointing to isn't something that can be grasped in any sort of satisfying way by the conceptual mind so what you were describing there is the exploration of the subjective position as the experiencer as the one who is experiencing an outside world an objective reality separate from that subjective position upon exploration upon investigation that subjective position can't be found other than a 
thought formation other than a suggestion or a deeply held and felt assumption that I am here looking out at a world out there and because I am here I'm, I'm consistently here as the subject then the objective wor world is, is inherently existing and consistently there as a real thing as a real world landscape um, series of definable objects with their own separate and inherent existence and there are there seem to be I mean they're not distinct uh, ultimately but they seem to be dis distinct from the point of view of the mind illusions that make it look like this so for example one of the illusions is time so if I'm an in inherently existing always here subject that sense of the always here subject gives the rise to the illusion of the always here world that's just there and that uh, needs time to function so I've parked here before and filmed a video from the point of view of the inherently here subject this place inherently exists it's been here when I've not been here and I'm returning to to the same place of which I've been here before none of that exists in direct experience so this is the first time that this place has ever existed out with memory I need the memory and I need the implication of time to construct the illusion that this is a real solid place that I've been before that this isn't the only experience that ever has been of this apparent place and what creates that illusion is the idea that I'm always here moving through the world the memory that I have been here before and the belief that that's a real thing that happened in the past like that will melt your mind if you try and think about it right because the, the, the mind can only operate in that uh, paradigm it can't understand that, that I've never been here before like this has never existed before as a, an event or something that happened or some place that I've been to and there's no way you can wrap your head around that because the, the mind needs time to function and it uses that illusion of time to construct a inherently existing always here world and an inherently existing always here subject that moves through that world independent of it how's that for a mind mind bender <laughs> so this experience is the only experience that ever is and ever was and ever will be and it's right here and there's nothing besides that that, actually, that I can say is actually real so in looking back at that subjective position we see that the always here long-lasting inherently existing subject just can't be found other than a series of thoughts and memories uh, a, a bunch of conditioning that is used as a function to orient this mind body functionally in a world um, to keep itself safe to function properly and, and so on and so on but it turns out none of that's actually needed um, none of that's actually happening it's just an illusion um, and it's a necessary illusion for a, a, a time um, but there comes a time when you can safely just let go of that so when you walk through different rooms of your house you feel like you know I, I know this space I have a map of this space in my head and I'm referring to it from a point of view of the one who's moving through it if you can drop all of that 
and maybe your house is a good one to start with because you know it, you could probably walk through it with your eyes closed. See how much of that is actually, how, how much of that is dependent on thought? How much of you functioning and moving through an environment is depending on, dependent on thought? And how much of that is just the environment moving through itself spontaneously? So then do you need that mental map? Is it necessary? Is it even there all the time? Is it just an assumption? So the other aspect of this uh, subject is the, the idea of form and space. I touched on this in the last video. Um, the idea that there is something back here, separate from the sensed world, which is always here, consistently, relating to it from a distance. Um, creating, always creating a, the mind's always creating a spatial map to orient itself in uh, sensate reality, to orient itself as a separate thing moving through it. Upon investigation, again, we see that when we d relax the aperture of the um, direction of attention, or we, so to speak, direct the attention back the way through the sense perceptions, we see that there's nothing here other than what's sensed. Like I went into a bit of detail last time about the the nothingness that doesn't exist. The 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 it's so hard to talk about that 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 emptiness um, that we don't find when we direct the attention back to where we assume the subject to be. Something happens. Something collapses. That's the idea of this constantly existing separate subject back here. That when we investigate it, we just see it's a flimsy assumption. Uh, thought. A, a, a thought that's, that, that seems to be related to all those memories of me. All those projections into the future. Um, my whole story. Um, time. That thought is deep and it's felt, but it is, a, it is an assumption. But that assumption has has grown this seemingly complex illusion um, of a separate self relating to a separate world. But it only ever appears as one thought. It only ever appears as a, a singular assumption, let's say, when we really, in a refined way, um, examine it. So then we start to become a, a, aware of the, the absence of that suggestion. And like I said in the last video, the, the nothingness that seems to be the position, or the hollowness that seemed to be the position from which we were taking reference before in thought. So then we kind of become familiar with that emptiness, that nothingness. It becomes extremely fascinating. Um, and with the collapse of that always existing subject, then collapses the illusion of continuity. The illusion of things existing when I don't perceive them. When, when, they're, when they're not manifest in experience, as experience. So then the, the, the solid world of inherently existing things as a, a mental model, a map, then is seen to be spontaneously transient, empty of inherent substance, empty of actual existence as something real, something solid, when that position of the subject collapses. So does the, the, the reality of the objective world. And then there goes apathy, there goes uh, boredom, there goes... Um, dissatisfaction like uh, who, who was it um, uh, Nisargadatta Nisargadatta Maharaj said something like when I look within I see that I am nothing 
when I look out, I see that I am everything. And, and between these two, my life turns. Sorry if I butchered that that quote. Um, and he's, I, I think he's talking about exactly this. Like I said, the um, the uh, that subjective position when it can't be found then becomes felt as the um, interface or the threshold point or the intersection or the, the the junction between absolute nothingness which doesn't exist and absolute everythingness which then becomes your only experience of yourself when there's no internal subject consistently suggested to be here in thought, then your only experience of what we once knew as the sense of I am, the sense of existence, the sense of myself, then becomes the sensed, uh, the sense experience without the vision, the, the, the appearance, the sound, the sensation is the only thing that um, is here but it also appears as that nothingness as that transient emptiness that uh, how, how could you say that we now you're not aware of it you don't experience it but it becomes obvious in the as, in and as the experience itself the empty nature of all things, the and and in and, and that it, there's in that lack of solidity, in that lack of inherent realness, it becomes completely free. It becomes a, a mind blowing experience that you're head on with all the time that you can't not experience. The reality, appearance, appearing out of nothing and then disappearing back into nothing without the need for an inherently existing, stable, uh, constant called me or a constant called infinite subject or infinite awareness um, to give it a background, to give it a canvas to express itself then all there is is the expression. All there is is the appearance. And that appearance is what is aware of itself, is awareness. If you can even, if you're even inclined to bother using terms like that, aware beingness, aliveness, and so on, then it just becomes all about the experience. And in, in that, that, um, like when when you tr so for, for for me when I try when these insights hit and when it, my mind had a, a momentum where it tried to figure it out and trying to figure that out it created um, this tension this this dissatisfactoriness this urgency this this pain this emotional um, deep experience of uh, fear and confusion and it was I, I can't describe it but it was just like um, I need to know I need I need to have something to hold on to uh, I need to have a um, reference point or a point of view to make myself feel stable to, to hold on to myself in a way uh, but in, in the periods where that's not there then there's just a simple freedom and what is, is and that's it there, there doesn't need to be a, an explanation or a, a vantage point or a background there doesn't need to be something that you can explain something that you can comprehend in any sort of way 
um, in any sort of felt way. Um, so, it, in a way, then you you could say that you become the paradox. You become the nothingness that is everything. And when when there's there's not that tendency to form a position or a point of view or a reference point, like that very subtle tendency to to hold on to any sort of narrative about the way things are, that's complete freedom. And it's not a kind of freedom that you can really say anything about, because the saying anything about it is the obstruction to that freedom, <laughs> um, <coughs> you could say. Um, so, what is the entry point to what I'm talking about, let's say. And I think it's necessary to have um, seen through the belief in the reality of the, the subject in the mind, the thinker, the one that needs to be constantly there to comprehend things from a point of view in the mind. So that's what I would maybe describe as the initial shift in perception, the initial recognition, is that the thinker is just a thought, and what I am is not a thought, is not the thinker, is not the reference point. Um, the one who's aware of my thoughts as a um, real thing, observer, separate from my thoughts. I think that insight um, needs to clarify to a degree where there isn't that constant need, to, uh, that constant appearing of the, the thinker who wants to explain things, who wants to understand things, um, so that there can be a, an open, alert stillness necessary to then explore the senses, to explore what, what we call the, what we call me physically in this world. Um, and then it's just like Rachel said, a simple exploration of what this actually is in the absence of the assumption, in the absence of the assumed reference point trying to find where I am in this. Like, where am I in this physical world? And exploring the, the nature of the senses immediately without analysis, without, or you're really, you're really looking for the assumptions. So for me, like I always say, um, there was an assumption that I'm here somewhere and I'm looking out and there's space in between, and what's over there is over there, um, and I'm actually here. And turning that round and looking back the way, to see actually where am I, and finding nothing but uh, an automatic assumption that comes up, that's made in mind, that is a thought, then that, seeing through that assumption, then opens up the paradox that I'm talking about. And without that um, constantly appearing thought, with felt realness that suggests and assumes an always here, inherently existing subject called me, in the absence of that, then I can't even explain it anymore. So you, can, you just find out for yourself. Um, but anyway, I'll need to go now. That's just a wee uh, follow-on from the last video. Um, and I'll talk to you next time.